really can come back and turn around this set. Yeah, so really excited to see how these two teams, and especially Lords, is going to be able to kind of shake off everything, <laughs> shake off the rush, shake off just a little bit of those feelings that maybe that they're not going to be able to live up to the hype of Columbia no College. Problem. Now, Return, we are getting in to Champion Select for our first game of the semifinal. Yeah, and a little bit of housekeeping for all our viewers out there. We are, in fact, on the 8.6 patch. This did drop on Thursday, so not much time for people to actually get acclimated to this patch. And especially looking at that ADC position, so much has changed. With top of that list has to be the changes to Rageblade. Yeah, I mean... Making it a little bit more hard for the Vars and for Kogma to be quite as powerful at the earlier stages of the game. But also, kind of want to go back. We got quite a number of bands so far. And a lot of them seeming like bands that we'd see on 8.5. Certainly, Sony. You have to wonder exactly how much time these teams have had to practice on this patch alone. So, and once again, saying the patch only turned over on Thursday. That being said, already seen the Talia band isn't too crazy all arrow loves to go to this pick he can win lane with it certainly had some troubles in his last matchup versus columbia college as to taking that early game lead and turning it into a bot lane tower a mid a top lane tower that you normally would like to see on a talia uh, but it will be the caitlin as that adc pool has gone very unusual and speaking of unusual kaisa hasn't been banned yet and that is one champion who is on fire right now yeah she got a little bit of an overtuned in 8.6 well we don't see our feathered friend in Zaya anymore, as she got some nerfs, so definitely pushing up Caitlyn in that priority sense. She was relatively untouched outside of the static shift changes. I'd like to see that Skarner coming in for Bookzag. And this Galio, again, something that hasn't really been changed too much, is going to be a strong mid laner. The Galio has always been, all these last few patches, a point of contention around teams. Mostly because of how much pressure you can put down onto the bot lane, onto the top lane, while still having a decent laning phase. That being said, though, you have gotten the nerfs to Galio, where his Q does take a lot more mana in lane, and his ability to wave clear in the mid game is very closely linked over to his blue buff. So definitely looking to see the Lord's team actually start to exploit that, but here's a big thing for me. The Galio lock-in for Columbia College goes away from their normal win condition, especially against Lords, of getting the mid-game ADC, getting the mid-lane mid laner, a mid-game mid laner, so something like the Corky, whereas Lords is taking it for themselves. Yeah, but Columbia College do grab the gen, something that is quite powerful in that mid-game, and definitely has been making a resurgence in the meta. Yeah, that is... I definitely underestimated the Jin buffs right when they came out, and then Double Lift proves me wrong by just playing it repeatedly in the uh, LCS, and this is a champion you can take into the Caitlyn early and still have a viable laning phase against her. It's certainly something like the Tristana, which has been getting nerfed as of late especially, is having harder and harder times take staying uh, on par with a lot of these early game laning ADC. So the Jin is just something that's going to get you through that lane with a lot more power behind it, more chances to proc that W and even more damage on the Q. So uh, very easy to stay competitive, but no supports have been locked in just yet. And uh, with some new runes unlocked in the top lane, maybe pushing some bruisers up home. towards that top side of the to map, we them? could see some really big beefy tanks in that support role. In fact, I actually think that uh, Jax, one of the bands that came in, is considered the highest win rate with Conqueror at the moment. So definitely shows that maybe that's what Columbia College want to go for. It is a Conqueror type of top laner. So it's going to be Camille, who couldn't possibly go for that, but does also love her Arcane Comet. That feels like the safer pick to me. It's something that you know is going to work in the top lane. It gives you that split pushing pressure going into later stages of the match. And with Camille, Jin, and Skarner on top of the Galio for engage, there is so much potential for lockdown. But once again, comparing this set to the set we saw before where CC just two zeros Lords, they have swapped roles. Lords is now playing that mid game team fight composition, whereas Columbia College, they want to find these picks. Yes, they do, especially with the Galio Skarner comb uh, combination. Add in a Camille, it's all about trying to see who they can catch out. That's why Ooh. I respect a lot what Lord just did. The Braum and the Shen, great for peeling that away. It's certainly not the engage uh, style that we were hoping for before, but the Shen on the top side is a good counter to the Galio, even if it's not in the same lane. Certainly, yeah, Galio could actually be heading up to the top lane. No, that's not possible because Camille's going to top lane. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore, but. 
Uh, you can match the Galio pressure with the Shen pressure since you already lost the Talia, which is also seen as one of those Galio counters, just match pressure uh, one for one. But that does mean that the only source of early game playmaking on this squad is going to be in Hiami's J4. And that is something that was heavily exploited in their last matchup. Yeah, and honestly, this is something that we need to see how Hiami's really fixed it going into this matches. Whether or not he's started being that early game jungler like we kind of knew him to be. Especially since Jarvan hasn't been quite in the meta for some time. Sure, it does great into Skarner, it does great into the Predator people who just want to run at somebody. But I want to see him going aggressive. I want to see him try to go for some invades and some ganks. And he needs to get something done here because, uh, like we said, this team is so focused around that mid game. They need to accelerate the pace of the game to hit those two item spikes, to hit those three item spikes. Because going into that later game, it will be a little bit rough against all that potential for Columbia College. Basically, the idea is however much time you give Columbia College before those spikes and before your team fighting phase, it's just more time you give them to make a play. And Columbia College is a team that once you give them a lead, they do not let go of it. Yeah, but you can tell Columbia College are still giving a lot of respect over towards the Lords. Look at Evan RL. He's got Cleanse and Flash on this gin. He really is afraid of getting caught out. And that's also something we... Uh, it's a little bit interesting to see, because he also did receive a uh, nerf as far as the cooldown, as Homecoming does pick up the barrier on Caitlyn, so not completely sold that heal is just... An item is a spell you just don't take on ADCs anymore. I do think it will still be fairly effective, uh, though certainly also with the Ignite being reduced, uh, increased damage, and, not yes. reduced cooldown as well, but uh, it just leads to a lot more skirmishing on that bot side of the map, and I do have to say, looking at these two compositions, this doesn't really feel like 8.6. It feels like we're on 8.5 or even like 4 or 3 or just some point early in the season, and I want to see how these teams are going to adapt moving further into the series. It's like, you look over to Lords, it looks like an 8.3 sort of meta. Then you look over towards Columbia, an 8.5, but this is 8.6. So, honestly, I think we'll be able to have a better understanding on what we expect from these players once we get to see the keystones. But that's something that's going to have to wait for a little bit. Once we get in it to the loading screen, then we can really start dissecting everything. But, honestly, I just want to ask you... Going over towards Lords, you talked about how they need to have some early pressure from Hyami. But what about the rest of the lanes? Especially looking towards Kimo on the Shen, you have Braum in the bot lane to help peel for homecoming. Can that be a better win condition than just going for early aggression? It certainly can be, but it, it all requires that team to continue to play together. And uh, certainly when you look over the Columbia College side, they're really good as a team, but they're not unfallible. Probably the closest person to... The highest tier of play, I have to say, is Evan RL on that ADC. And historically, uh, Misty Stumpy in the top lane has been taken advantage of every once in a while. Mid lane, a little bit less so, but still Julian does hit the occasional stumbling block. But no one can ever turn that early game advantage into a mid to late game lead. And that's what we need to see. Lords in their last set found the kill lead every single game, but they never were able to take that first tower. They weren't able to take that second tower. And it's that kind of snowballing that Columbia College almost plays an SKT style against. They just wait for you to make a mistake, and then they just win the game. So true, and this is why Columbia College has been undefeated so far in it to college lulls. Such a strong team, they just have such great coordination and really can punish these minor mistakes that normal squads, you'd say, oh, that's just a minor mistake, nothing's going to happen. But like mm -hmm. I said, the SKT style of being able to really go into the face of Lords, but... I honestly think Lords have a good composition still. It's 8.6, changes are abound everywhere. The only thing that I think will truly matter is going to be the Caitlyn with the static shiv nerfs. I mean, honestly, if you hit the nameplates and just ask, okay, which one do you think is Lords? Which one do you think is Columbia College? I would have completely swapped this. Uh, but now, Columbia College trying to play the aggressive style in Lords, almost a little bit on the back foot with those scaling lanes. I need to see if Lords is actually comfortable playing this style because it is definitely a step removed from what they normally go for. Interesting that now that we get the champ loadout screen, we actually got to see that nobody took the new keystone, unfortunately. I was really hoping Misty Stumpy would give us um, some fun times to be able to talk about that, but going with the tried and true in the arcane comment.
that's not really too shocking for me, especially into a matchup against somebody like that Tank Shen top lane. You just want to whittle him down. It's why Nar was on top of the meta for so incredibly long. It's why Scion came up, and it's why Camille came up, both uh, having the ability to use that arcane combo to really bully out those lanes, but... Uh, right now, not too much is going to be changing. I guarantee you, though, as the series go on, goes on, you will start seeing that Conquer Rune start coming out because that is just the key unlocking mechanism for bruisers in this top side. Especially into some of these things, getting that bonus true damage towards them. So even if they build the resistances, it doesn't really help them out too much. Is not something to scoff at. Oh, no, not... <laughs> Not even close. When, if you have someone with Conquer who just starts popping off, so much of that damage oh, comes around, but Lords! No double stun into the taunt. Beautiful stuff. Getting the flash out of Homecoming already. And Artemis taking so low. Lords, I'm not sure that trying to play Dominion was worth it there. Yeah, they had absolutely no backup. Hiami and Kimo already moved up to that top side, and that is just good early game planning coming out of Columbia College. And already a little bit of... It looks like just a nice little leash left by Misty Stumpy there. <laughs> Misty Stumpy doing what he loves to do, going for that early aggression when he knows Ooh, that he's not really going to be punished. looking for some fighting. Uh, nope. He's kind of following him, but <laughs> I, it's a Shen. Kimo mm -hmm. on Shen into a Camille. Though it is a good pick into the Camille. I don't know if you want to go for a one-on-one -on -one at level one. That is definitely not the most optimal way to play that one. Although uh, there was Missy Stumpy kind of hanging around the bush, maybe looking for some early fighting, but uh, speaking of early fighting, Evan RL is the core member to watch here for Columbia College. It seems like each and every match he just finds some way to pop off, and now Homecoming is nothing. So much damage onto him. All they need is one more auto. The flash is coming in, and first blood picked up by Evan RL. He is definitely proving that he is the guy to watch. Yeah, and I cannot think of a worse start to this game for Lords than giving Evan RL first blood. I mean, once you... It, I don't care how aggressive of a lane you are. If you're Caitlyn, if you have Caitlyn Lulu, you have to respect the lack of a summoner spell. And Evan RL on the Jin does damage early. That's why this pick is seeing a resurgence, not only in Collegiate, but in the LCS as well. And I mean, he's got that first brick. He's got that first gold. He's got a little bit of money in his pocket. And this is how Columbia College just wins games. Exactly. I mean, we didn't expect to see this amount of early aggression out of them, but Columbia College do like to prove us wrong with how they love to play. Really like to go for these kills, and got to give a lot of credit in that bot lane first blood towards Dean. Consistently la landing those dazzles on to homecoming. Yeah, he is playing this one incredibly well. Dean, if he doesn't land that stun, you don't get the kill out from there. And that's just knowing that... I mean, it's not the hardest thing in the world to know that, oh, we just saw Caitlyn blow her flash, we can go aggressive on her, but it's that state of mind, knowing exactly when you can punish, that really starts separating out some of these supports. The the mid-tier from the great and oh, top Ooh, lane. Pop. Look at that. That was Bookzak looking for a dive. I was getting ready to start talking about it. Misty Summy's like, nah, I got this. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, and that's already a really good first move from Buk, and just like that, sure, it is still very early on in this game, and it is crucial to not underestimate the team with that mid-game scaling, with the double ADC composition, but now, two lanes that arguably shouldn't be having a lead this early on in both Missy Stumpy's Camille and bot lane with uh, Homecoming's Caitlyn. Wait, 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 Missy Stumpy's Camille and bot lane FNRL's uh, Jin, is those are the people on the same team having good leads to work with, and these are two lanes that are not above snowballing, and so far, Hiami hasn't been able to influence anything, and that's one of the reasons why the J4 is in the meta, or at least used to be. He can make these early game plays, and now it's even more on him to find something for the squad. Well, he's got to do it soon, because when you get two kills early in lanes where you rightfully shouldn't be for Columbia College, and your jungler is nowhere to be seen, it's only going to start getting worse and worse. The snowball, as you said, is going to keep on going. I mean, the one that really stands out to me has got to be that Camille, though. The Shen's normally considered the counter pick, yet you get a kill solo on a dive at level 4? Yeah, no, that's uh, <laughs> that is definitely not what is in Lord's playbook just yet. I guarantee that's not how it's written up on the, on the board in. Honestly, with so many early game mistakes coming out of Lords, especially focusing in now on that ball and with Homecoming just overextending for very little reason, 
it just sets you so far back in going back to the idea of the SKT style Columbia College they wait for you to make a mistake and then they just demolish you for it and they are so good at pouncing on any little mistake I mean they didn't really have to wait too long in this game for those mistakes now did they yeah, no, usually, usually you're looking like, oh, they'll make a mistake at the 30 minute mark, at the 45, and they'll turn this game around. Usually you're not thinking of, oh, they're gonna miss something at level 2 and fall lanes basically over at that point. Or uh, try to go for, you know, the Skarner Pillar at prior to one minute, and then have to lose both your summoners for your Caitlyn. I guarantee you that that will not happen again. You will not be seeing uh, in game number 2, Homecoming. Uh, going that far forward, and I honestly wouldn't be shocked to see uh, Lord's University after this just go to a straight-up fan. I mean, it is a defensive option, but uh, nothing really being gained with how they found it the last time, and honestly, just stay safe. You have strong laners. You have uh, these members that can find their own micro leads in this game, but just you throw one wrench in the machine, and it just blows up. Right now, Kalmy's still just farming away Seems that he's content on just trying to get towards his Cataclysm to make it a little bit more difficult for Booksack to get into the fights. But at the same time, that's kind of what Booksack wants to do on the Skarner. He wants the Impale so that he can be that much more pivotal towards these fights. And if you thought that they've been having a good time locking people down in these fights and uh, in the top lane, in the bot lane, before level 6, keep in mind that there's still a Hextech ultimatum in the top lane. There's still an Impale on the Skarner, and there's still a heroic entrance coming out of Julian. I mean, this is a lead you can snowball off of. Find that first tower with a good three-man roam on the top side. Kimo will have absolutely nothing he can do against it. The classic way of countering a Shed is just hit the Shed. Exactly, and that seems to be what Misty Stumpy wants to do, because he doesn't have to worry about the other side of the map. It's pretty definitive going over towards Columbia College. They have such great vision control of that bot side of the map that it easily led to that Ocean Drake they got. No, there isn't even a attempt coming out of Lords to try to see if they can put down even one ward towards it. And that's easily just because of these lanes are not winning. Chemo's not winning mid uh, top side. Mid lane at best is pushing in favor for all arrow, but it's not really definitive. And having a Galio is just a whole nother issue when you're a jungler. And bot lane losing so hard so early means that Hiami never is going to have backup for one of these invades. If he wants to get into that jungle, he needs to break open one of these lanes first. He's got to break open one of these lanes, but at the same time, like we talked about with that vision, it's pretty hard for you to try to go for a gank when it's like, hey, he's most likely topside. We haven't seen him bot in a while. So I like Booksack and where he's trying to go in to try to go for this, and Doc Rat targeting the source of the globals. Take out Chemo. Pull him back into the fight. They take him down again. Not even going to be able to use Flash. And Columbia College right now are just targeting every single point on the map where Lords could use the team fight. I mean, when you're this far down, you're probably thinking, okay, we've got the Shen ulti. Let's make something happen on this bot side. Take out the Shen. This Kaylin's going to be a menace to our bot laner, Evan RL. Let's take out the Kaylin. And now you got to start looking towards this mid lane because uh, the last real team fighting member who's going to be on this item curve is all arrow in the mid lane and sure he's doing a pretty good job staying up in cs it's what you'd expect into the galio matchup but i mean with the camille with this garner with a galio you gotta wonder how long can this man stay safe i mean the biggest thing is it's into a galio like you just mentioned where he doesn't necessarily care if he's getting ahead or not he's gonna be impactful regardless all he needs to do is get close enough to this Garner who's running right into the back line to put the heroic entrance on him. Certainly, and in the late game, it I don't care who on Lord's University side you jump onto, but if you hit the Impale, the uh, Hextech Ultimatum, that person is not leaving. I don't care how far behind Julian is, he is still an amazing CC bot. And Lord's, to counter this, they need to find their way to get to the team fights because if they do, there's a lot of magic damage lacking on the side of Columbia College. They do have the ability to team fight, and even Columbia College having Jin as the ADC, it's not ideal for the situation. But they're playing to their strengths right now, and unless Lords are going to be able to break something open, get these guys to their team fighting points, they're going to be very hard pressed to actually get to a team fight. But it's a good move by Lords. Their try attempted control of the vision in the bot side of the map, even though the dragon is gone. So I'm trying to make sure that they can keep Bookzack in range because 
It's a level 7 Skarner. He's gonna have the Impale. It's already back up from his last adventure in the top side of the map. As long as you can spot him out, it should be a little bit easier for possible roams or possible ganks from Kiyami. Certainly so, but now it's ten and a half minutes and Hiyami hasn't actually made an aggressive move on the map. And I mean, J4 is not a pick you normally see on this meta. Sure, he's kind of every once in a while when you really need that early game pressure, but in the late game, he just falls so unbelievably off. Especially with the nerfs to both uh, the Cinder Hulk and the Warmogs, it's even harder to get to that big teamfight tanky uh, J4 build potential. And that's really going to start showing because we get even closer and Lords at some point will try to make that comeback. They will try to make that team fight work, but I mean, without a true tank on the front line, without anyone getting an advantage, it's still going to come down to just absolutely flawless execution. Lords now looking to see if they can get a little bit of an invade in to Booksack. Trying to see if they can control those buffs, but feels like it's a little bit too late. We're 11 minutes into the game now. Items are starting to be completed. We got a lot of components all over the place, but like you mentioned, this isn't really when the, the J4 feels the most impactful. It's that early game when he wants to go for those games. He's got the high base damages. He's got to worry about resistances that have been piled on for Julian, for Booksack, and even a little bit going into the bot side of the map for Dean. And when you just compare these two junglers in the Skarner and the J4, once you hit level 6, the Skarner's already won. The Skarner just will be 10 times more useful than you in nearly any single situation, so you gotta find something early on the J4, and I really hope that either in games 2, game 3, as we do have a best of 5 and are guaranteed at least 3 games, that something's gotta change for this early game, and you can just chalk it up to, okay, we didn't expect the bot lane to be knocked down this hard, we expected to be able to play through the bottom lane, but... That's maybe your excuse for game number one, but games two, three, and hopefully four, five, something needs to be different. I mean, the Olaf, if I recall, was open. They could have easily gone for that, which is a great pick into the Skarner. Something maybe even more akin to the Nocturne, which has kind of been showing his face now and then into the LCS could have been a viable option. Okay, so I have very mixed feelings on the Nocturne. Uh, you're right, he was picked in the LCS. On the other side, Dardoch straight fed on him. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I definitely Dardoch, don't think... So let's be fair. That, that is completely true. Uh, I don't think that discredits him as a champion just overall. <laughs> but Nocturne has such a specific uh, playstyle that you really need to be going extremely hard onto individual targets. Uh, where if your whole game plan is just to shut down Evan RL, sure, that is a perfectly fine choice, especially if you uh, get knocked down a few in the pick bands, maybe Skarner's not available for you, uh, or something to that extent, or Olaf's not available. That is an option, but I, I, I personally wouldn't recommend it to the Lord Squad right now, and this could be the second drag of the game, and Columbia College, this is so far a perfect game for them. Is, but this could be the attempt coming in from Lords. They want to see if they can get anything, but before the flag and drag the Impale landed, even with the Staining United, it's trying to keep Hayami alive, but here comes the Cosmic Gradients to give them a lot of health back and the resistances that they need with the teleport from Misty Stumpy completed, the backline being decimated. They don't even have to worry about Artemis because they're taking down everybody who's seeming like a tank as they got three kills, four kills, because they finally got Homecoming, and actually... That ends up being the ace for Columbia. And that's just an incredibly poor teamfight decision coming out of Lords. The one shining point that they could always point to in that was they have not lost a tower yet. They haven't lost a convincing teamfight, and they still have time to scale. But before all arrow even has the Triforce, before even boots are acquired for homecoming, he only has the Infinity Edge in the pocket, they try for a teamfight. They try to contest the Infernal, and... I mean, you just gotta wait until you are ready, and at that point, they play right into Columbia College's hands. They don't get the surprise factor, they don't get the initial engage with Yami being locked down, and they just don't even come close to taking that fight. Not at all, and returned. That was a 14-minute clean ace from Columbia. Not just that, they get the tower, first brick gold spot lane, they get the infernal drake as well. Everything is going right for Columbia. And the biggest thing is they're not making that many plays. The only two plays I can really point to was the top lane roam from Buck, uh, able to knock down Kimo, and just Dean on the bottom lane landing the stun at the very beginning of the match. This isn't Columbia just completely destroying the members of Lords in the lanes. They're just winning the map. 
They're trying to see if they can go for the dive from Lords onto Evan RL, but Dean was in the area and he stopped Yami from being able to go under the tower and kept this AD carry alive. Sure, he got poked out pretty heavily. He was able to keep the perfect game hopes in the hands of Columbia. And I mean, when you look at this match, you, and especially given the fact that it is a best of five, you do have to start taking into account the mental factors. Lords needs to be in a positive mindset going into these other games if they're still going to have a chance for the comeback. And I mean, the comeback isn't something we haven't seen before, and it's not something that's out of the range of their wheelhouse. But I mean, getting completely ace is one thing. Missing that one kill on the top lane when Evan or else like one hit away from death, that's like the most tilting thing. So yeah, you talk about that being the most tilting thing, but there's a lot of things that I've seen this game that for Lords, they really got to look at and say, we cannot make this mistake again. We cannot allow this to happen. That just being one of many. Yeah, that whiteboard is going to be filled in this post game, and Chilling Walk, the head coach for Lords, is going to have his work cut out for him. Uh, I really do think that this game... And what it feels like is Lords came into this match with a very strict set of events they needed to happen. They needed bot lane to get the lead. They needed to allow Hyami to really play through this bot side of the jungle. Solidifying control for both the ADC and the mid laner to hit that mid to late game. Use Kimo as kind of the low economy guy in the top lane you can always count on and just play through there. But one little fight going the wrong way. Actually, it wasn't even a fight. It was just one uh, pre-level one Rome over on the bot side, Homecoming moving up to that uh, Dominion Skarner Shrine, and that just throws the entire game plan off. And like a potential fight coming into the top side of the map, here's the heroic entrance with the Cosmic Radiance knocking up Artemis. The curtain call laid out to slow down Artemis. They're focusing so much on to that support that they forgot all about Evan RL. Hyami was onto him, but he's alone in this backline. Cataclysm coming down with the Stain United, but it's not in time to save his life as he goes down and pale the drag back homecoming so he cannot escape the dazzle to finish off Artemis. So it's another three kills into the pockets of Columbia all the while. Misty Stuffy laying down the law in the bot lane. I mean, one item has finally been achieved absolutely everywhere on this map, but think of how much time Lords had on that engage. They had a solid three seconds where they could just go on anyone they wanted to, or at least anyone that was within range, and they barely got CC Dean down by, like, it looks like 200 HP, honestly, and then the Taric ultimate comes down and nothing else can go across. Heroic entrance, everyone knocked around, and Hiami trying to dive the back line. And this is now just too big of a advantage to fight through. I mean, you gotta look for that two item, you gotta look for that three item, but honestly, by the time that carries four lords makes it to the uh, two, three item mark, I wouldn't be shocked to see Columbia College on five. All this while, the tower is being taken across the map. We saw tier two in the bot lane and tier one in the top lane. A lot of gold into the pockets of Columbia. And that a lot of books actually go and solo out the Rift Herald, so <laughs> this is really going so horribly wrong for the Lord squad. Now, if they pick out Misty Stumpy here, that could be pretty nice. Gotta remember, Hookshock is still available. I mean, anything they can get is just more than they can ever hope for at this point. They need literally any single advantage that Columbia College is willing to toss them right now, and I think this match is very telling so far, especially given that this is basically the swapping of the playstyle. Lord's playing the more uh, disciplined, mid-game team fighting composition that wants to get to those items and win through fights. Oh, on the other side, Columbia College is making that, is taking advantage of the big ultimates, the big skirmishes uh, sort of composition that relies on all those lockdown ultimates. And you can see how Lord just isn't comfortable playing up to Columbia College's level of play when it comes to the discipline. And the big portion of the mid-season for Columbia College was spent literally just hammering down that uh, the Corky pick in the mid lane, getting to that team fighting phase, and they just made it look so easy. And Lords aren't able to aren't able to just pull that off right now. I don't think that's anything to say against All Arrow. He's been doing a fantastic job. Was bowling around Julian most of the game, but it's into a Galio that you're bowling around. Someone who always will remain impactful. Getting the Bissell mask is just going to make it so that he's not much tankier into the Corky. So the Corky's pretty much doing negligible damage at that point. Certainly so, and... It, oh, not enough time oh. in the lane! 
there's not much that you can really talk about that when it's the Predator, the movement speed from Skarna to lock down the Caitlyn, and Artemis, he attempted to keep his AD carry alive, but honestly, he should have run for the hills knowing that there is no way you can save your Caitlyn when you're being run down by the Scorpion King himself. Honestly, there is nowhere outside the base that is safe for Lord's University right now, and Harold coming out, they're looking for even more, but without an ADC, they can't fight. Not at all, and these towers should go down. They should be able to get onto the inhibitor. I don't think they should be able to take it, but they should be able to do a lot of damage to it. It does seem like Columbia College is going to be just taking what they got with those two towers, backing on off, and that gives them a bit more time to talk, and uh, I do kind of want to clarify something I said. I don't think that any of this really can be attributed to all arrow. Uh, the showing of the Corky going over to the other side was more of the idea of playing around the two-item spike, and yeah, he's doing a great job right now, and there's honestly not much you can really do in that matchup to uh, really impact the team. Maybe you can make a case for, oh, maybe he's not warding enough to uh, help cover out Buck, but he's doing his job. It's just the team in general doesn't seem comfortable playing this style. For whatever reason, the Lord's members have decided to group up in that pixel brush. The but classic. I'm... But they're committing so much time into this. They're down 12,000 gold. This... You really... At 21 minutes, do you really need to do this? This this is... Uh, honestly, with how big this gold lead is, it's necessary. <laughs> this is like the big football... Were they not caught? Oh, they might they not have actually caught. been seen by that. They were not at all. Okay, oh, so, so this right here is like... The, f the high school national championships, the, the Pee Wee team, the underdogs are like 50 points down. They need the Hail Mary pass. This is what you're witnessing oh. right here, right now. Oh. Oh. Fnatic Julian? would be proud. Look, Zach. They no, look no moves. They're going to see no him. No, you got to go now before the failure goes down. And they actually jump onto Book Zach. But the Cosmic Radiance <laughs> gets the heroic entrance as well. Nobody is dead. Redemption to get them healthy. So they didn't even need to worry about anything. They just finished off Artemis instead. Now Misty stepping into the back line onto Homecoming. Gotta be careful. He was taken pretty low. But the double kill is for Dean. They pull back in at the jungler and finish him off for a killing spree for book sack they might even be able to turn onto the baron pretty easily from that yeah columbia college had to be feeling so incredibly confident and the most telling thing for me that fight was homecoming when he was locked down he flashed forward trying to get the kill onto misty stumpy because lords they just want something at this point in time and oh 13k down i just don't see any way lord can come back in this game Columbia College are just so far in control. I'm not even sure. Okay, Arlera will get out of that one, but... They had the package, so... I mean, he gets out of that one, but does he really get out of that? Because it's a 15k gold lead. Baron on at Columbia, 23 minutes in. This is not late game. This is... Well, it is late game now, but... <laughs> This is this late is game for Columbia College. Lords, they're still in the laning phase as far as items go, and that's really the thing. When you're playing this composition, if you want to play the Columbia College style, you have to be so disciplined in your play. Don't give away too much. Wait for the opponents to make a mistake, but you can't really wait for, to, uh, for the other team to make a mistake when you're the ones making the mistake. Well, I mean, I think a lot of this, we've talked about so many times, but it all boils down to that first play where... This is a composition that we talked about in Champ Select from Lords that wanted to play a little bit aggressive early. They wanted to try to see if they could punish Evan RL, punish Dean, maybe even punish Booksack. But the fact that they lose two summoners on their carry on Caitlyn before laning phase even starts literally dictated the rest of the game. Yeah, it's like you're putting together one of those cheerleading like pyramids and unfortunately if the guy at the bottom dies, everyone else is just going to come toppling down and uh, very unlikely to win the state championships at that point and Columbia College now are pressing pretty hard. They want an inhibitor. Going to be able to take it pretty easily and Hiami in the top side did not land the flag and drag. In fact, he was just out of range to be able to pull himself towards that flag. Because of that, not only does Misty Stumpy get out of there alive, but Columbia College easily marched it all down bottom and take it out and take out an inhibitor to, uh an inhibitor tower and inhibitor yeah they're they're just looking to close the game out at this point with the baron buff uh, that's not realistically going to be that hard of a feat 
certainly their composition still has some weaknesses in the team fighting phase, especially Evan Rell only be able to hit one target at once, but oh, they're just going to go right on in. Die. If they take out the inhibitor tower in mid, and they think that they can easily take out everyone who's in their way. Artemis was the first one, the first casualty for Lords, but he will not be the last as the second inhibitor will be finished off by Columbia. Yeah, I mean, everyone else is falling back to safety, but how long are you realistically going to be safe? The base is just falling by the wayside, and Lords, they need a miracle right now if they want to come back in this game. I don't even think it's about miracles. This is the best of five. You got to start thinking about the future as now Booksack looking to pad the KDAs of Evan RL. He's godlike in this game. They continue to press this attack onto Lords who know there's no way that they can fight back. They're going to give up. Artemis has left Nexus. the game. Seems that he's already thought about the next game as well. He's just like, no, we're going to get to game two. We got to figure out what went wrong because the perfect game is real and Columbia College, they're the ones to get it. When you're looking back at that game, I mean, obviously, it was very impressive for Columbia College, but it wasn't Columbia really winning the lanes. They 